What you're seeing is an atmospheric overhaul, and more importantly, one that took surprisingly little time to make. Reimagining this scene involved creating some custom shaders, C-sharp scripts to pass data to those shaders, and finally, some strategic light placement. Let's get into the shaders first. There are two unique shaders at play here. The first is an emissive shader, the intensity of which is decreased as the distance between the shader surface and a given position increases. In our case, that given position is a real-time point light that's animated to move down the corridor, which gives the effect of a cool power surge. The purpose of this point light is to fake real-time global illumination that would be coming from the shader's light emission. The next shader is a mock CRT screen, although really, the screen's display graphic is irrelevant. All we're after here is the flicker function. In this function, we're multiplying the surface shader's emission intensity by an irregularly oscillating number, if the flicker parameter is met. To generate this number, we're just adding together two sine waves using the current time multiplied by some arbitrarily different number, the scale of which determines the speed of the oscillation. To stop them all flickering in sync, we'll also have to add the magnitude of the world space origin of our material's mesh to the time values that we're calculating the sine of. Now, given that all the screens aren't occupying the same space, they'll flicker in a neat pseudo-random kind of way. What I left out, though, is that we're still going to need a C-sharp script to pass the mesh's world space origin and to determine when we're supposed to be flickering in the first place. And this also goes for passing the position of the point light from earlier to the emissive light shader. The simplest script here only has one job. Every frame, it gets the power surge emission shader and passes it the world space position of our point light. So that's it. There's our little roundabout way of faking real-time global illumination. Our next script for the screens, however, is a little more involved. Beyond passing the origin position of each material's renderer, we also need to control when each screen begins flickering. I've chosen to do this with a central control script that finds each renderer and subsequent material via individual screen component mono behaviors. These individual components also have helper functions that can be used by the main controller. The idea here is to synchronize the screen flickering with the power surge effect. So, every quarter of a second, we're iterating through our handful of renderers, checking their distance from the point light, and setting their flicker parameter based on if that distance is less than the preset amount. Now comes the easier part. With the main indirect lighting features done, we need some spooky direct lighting to complement them. For this scene, I decided deep red lighting would nicely contrast the cooler, ambient atmosphere of the ship. Because I'm targeting VR, the performance cost of real-time lights quickly adds up, which makes it ideal to minimize their usage. I ended up settling on two red spotlights placed at low angles in order to cast long shadows across the environment. To make this lighting choice plausible, I also threw together an emergency light model in Blender and placed them throughout the scene. This also implies that the spaceship's crew might have had some time to react to the power outage. With those lights in place, the spooky atmosphere really starts to come together, with just enough light to subtly guide the player in the right direction. The final scene also silently communicates that something is seriously wrong. This is definitely not just another day in the life. Thanks for watching this design video. For the code snippets that I featured in this video, you can visit my website in the description. If you want to see more of my content in the future, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.